If I solve that, what will I get at the end? What result will I have? It'll tell me the place where the gradient of this cubic curve okay, is equal to... Now, what, what does this mean? mx minus 4. Well, mx minus 4 is the, um, it's the y-coordinate of this line. right? So it'll tell me when the gradient of the curvy thing is the same as the y-coordinate of the straight line. Is that useful? Gradient. Y coordinate. No, it doesn't actually take you anywhere, right? You, you might find it, but you're like, woohoo, like what does that have to do with anything? Um, the, my position is the same as the rate that I'm changing for some other quantity. Okay. So this turns out to be not that useful either. Okay. Now, by the way, even though we haven't got anything useful out of this yet, this process is still important because we're ruling stuff out. Okay. What's left? What's left? <laughs> I, I'm going to suggest non-induction <laughs> that this is this does have to be solved with something. Okay, the question is what? What are we going to make it equal to? All right. So this is the gradient at this particular point. Okay. What is it going to be equal to? Well, I should know what this is equal to, right? It should match the gradient of the line, right? Is that okay? What's the gradient of the line? M. Hmm. Now, okay, before we leave this, okay, this is true. I'm not subbing it into anything else because that's going to lead us to problems, okay? What I can say from this is, therefore, M has to obey this rule. Can you say that? That makes sense, right? Because X squared. The smallest it can be is zero, right? So therefore, the smallest m can be also zero. Okay. And what's that correspond to? The fact that this has to be going up. That makes sense. X cubed is monotonically increasing. So therefore, um, the line that we should have should also have positive gradient. Well, that's nice, but it doesn't give us an answer, right? Because it's obviously not true. I mean, if I put in m equals zero, m equals zero, what kind of straight line do I have? I have a horizontal line. Okay, so I have this line. Doesn't look like much of a tangent to me. Okay, so this might be true, but it's definitely not all the answer. So, what else can I do with this gradient? Any ideas? Any takers? I could differentiate again. That'd give me concavity. I think I'm going further away. <laughs> Let me put you out of your misery, okay? I'm going I'm to show you my solution. And by the way, I did what you're doing right now. I did it for about 15 or 20 minutes. And I was banging my head on a wall. And I thought, what am I missing? Okay, because I know this is true, but it's not enough. So I'm going to walk you through my solution. And then you stop me at the point where you get your aha moment, okay? And if I get to the end without you ever getting an aha moment, then that would be a shame. But that's okay. At least you'll get the answer. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. And maybe if you want to follow along, you can write this part down because this is... This is the way that I would solve it. If you got this in a trial exam, this is what I would do. Okay. I want to say, uh, let the point where the line is tangent to the curve. Okay. Let it be. Now, I want to put it at a p particular place. Okay. Um, Name in this place. Okay. Now, I don't exactly know where it is, but that doesn't mean I know nothing about it, okay? So, for instance, let's say its x value is k. I don't know what it is, all right? But if I know what the x value is, I'll know what the y value is too, won't I? If x value is k, then the y value will be k cubed, right? Because y equals x cubed, all right? So, this is k, k cubed. Right? That's an important point for us. That's what I'm going to call this point of intersection. Okay? Now, the reason why, even though that's very simple in itself, is so, that's so helpful, is that I know that this line has to pass through that point, and it also has to pass through this point down here. 0 minus 4. Right? So, this is enough to help me work out gradient. Right? It passes through 
Um, that intercept and the point we just made up. Okay. Now this is why this is so clever. Okay. To to get this question right, you can't just go forwards and like differentiation, and differentiate again, or calculus or induction. Okay. Actually, you're gonna go backwards a little bit. Back in year eight when we were first doing quantum geometry, right? How do you figure out the gradient of something? Well, you need to know two points that join, you know, and then you can work out the gradient of the interval, right? It's rise, rise over run, okay? So, therefore, okay, I can say M should be equal to... All right, what is rise over run in this case? Rise, K cubed, minus negative 4, so plus 4, all over K minus 0, okay? Now, that's the gradient in terms of these two points, okay? But I also know that the gradient at that particular point over there is equal to this, right? Because you differentiated, okay? So therefore, I should know that m's also equal to 3x squared when x is equal to k. Maybe that. Okay, can you see what's going on? I'm approaching the one value, m, I'm approaching it from two different directions. The problem you guys had, the reason why our equations kept on going in circles, is because you were approaching m from one angle, and then you approached it from the same angle. That's why when you put them together, you get something which is meaningless, okay? It's just like saying uh, x is equal to 2x on 2. It's like, well, yeah, that's true, but you don't get anything meaningful out of it, okay? You've got to come from two different places. All right, this we can solve, okay? So I can say 3k squared is equal to that. Okay. So crunch some numbers. Multiply your k across. You're going to get some k cubed over here and some k cubed over here. So you're going to have 2 here. And then there's just going to be this number 4 over here. Then you divide by 2 and you're going to get this. Sorry, that's a 3. Okay. So k is... The cube root of 2. Now, stop for a second. Does that make sense? What would it indicate over here? What is the cube root of 2? I don't know. 1.2 something? 1.3? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that kind of makes sense. All right? At least it's going off in the right direction. Um, and if k is equal to cube root of 2, then this is up at 2. Yeah, that seems consistent. Okay. Now, what we're actually interested in? The value of m, right? So how do I find that? Right, okay, because, um, right here. m and k are linked in this way, okay? So even though it's a bit awkward because you've got a cube root that you're squaring, I think probably the easiest way to write it is, m is equal to 3 times... K, which is a cube root, so that's 2 to the power of a third, right? So I guess I'd call that 2 to the power of 2 thirds. That's it. Okay. Thank you, thank you for, I did ask you to tell me, so that's, um, yeah, okay. Well, actually, yeah, I don't know if I should be upset that you only got it right at the end, or if I should be more, more upset that everyone else still hasn't gotten there. You explained it so badly that even when... Anyway. Okay, so anyway, there's, there's, there's the question. Okay. 